diving a snow cat wreck. I'm confirming I am on the snow cat. There it is! Yeah! This just became real. This is not the snow cat that we're pulling out, but I have to bring you up to speed as to how we actually came to, we're gonna be at a lake that is 10,300 feet in elevation. We've got like 10 divers that all came in, they're all volunteers. So what I wanna do is I want to introduce you to um, Mike here, the lodge owner for where we're staying. So we have to give a big shout out to Grand Mesa Lodge. Mike, thank you for hooking us up with cabins for everybody here. We kind of want to know like the backstory of this. I mean, we have a snowcat 65 to 80 feet deep, but we, don't, we won't know until later today how deep the snowcat is. But this one is similar to it. We, we want to know like how did the snowcat end up in your lake? Well, snowcat went out on the ice in early February and went uh, went through the ice. In my mind, no snowcat should ever go through the ice. Like, why would a snowcat punch through the ice? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Obviously, you could hit a pocket, a soft spot, or a thin spot. In my estimation, from what I saw when I went out on the lake, you know, that, that next day, I think the snowcat somehow spun its tracks and actually dug down through the ice to a point where it was thin enough that it went through at that point. The downside, there's a downside to all this. Yes, we're getting a snowcat, but we're here for a couple of reasons. One is the unfortunate side of this is two gentlemen, um, Ryan and Rick. Ricky. Ricky, um, locals, they've been local boys forever, right? Mm -hmm. um, tight in the community, and what's unfortunate about this is that both of them ended up passing away. Everybody here drove here from Oregon, Colorado, other parts across the U.S. to be here as volunteers to help bring, I, I'm going to say, resolution and closure for the community to have this out, but also no financial burden to the family as well as, you know, like, hey, does the forest, so who's, who's responsible for this? Is it the family, is it the forest service? Is it, um, you know, is there a state department or are we all forest service up it's there? It's all forest, yeah. We're gonna show you around this snow cat. The reason why we're taking a look at this one is so that way we have a good idea of what our lift points are gonna be. 15,000 pounds is what we're dealing with. So this is not a normal car that we normally pull out, <clears throat> you know, between 4,000 and 6,000 pounds. We're gonna be dealing with 10 to 12, maybe 14 lift bags to pull this up and off the surf, off the bottom. We're gonna be at multi-stage multi dives. We have so much going into it the next two days. So sit back, enjoy the video, leave your comments down below. We'll do what we can to answer them and I appreciate you being here today. So what are you seeing here, Nick? What is well, First thing, um, hopefully it doesn't have a plow and Mike's in. He doesn't remember it having that, but he's not 100% certain. That, if we can get back to that, it look, get back in here with that camera. Yeah. That, oh, I like that frame a lot better. Or the frame. Looks oh like yeah, yeah, better. frame. Yeah, we're good there. Well, but then, but then now here's our problem. Our problem is if we're coming from the, with the frame and we're bringing in the lifting strap right here, we're gonna end up crushing the cab. So we can't come to the front with any of it. Yeah, you're right. The cap sticks so we're over. We're gonna have to go back to the track. Or yeah. Um, this obviously doesn't have enough. How much strength does that track have? It can hold. That's not gonna hold. Thousand pounds. Yeah, that would rubbery. hang right off there. This is rubbery. This is gonna bend. This is gonna move. This is gonna flex. Now back here, you could do to the frame because I don't think the chain or whatever is gonna damage right. that that much. And if even if it does, that's not a hard repair right there. But you got all these places, look at that. You can get it around there. Oh, that's, a good, still that's, reach a, that's, in. A, that's a good one right there. Here in the middle, you got the support running through. You can wrap a strap around it in between the uh, track. Ooh, what about this? What if we can get through the top? There's that now. Too this tight. Does. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, this is good. So, so the first <laughs> thing I, yeah, so the first thing I really like is this back axle here. Uh -huh. I love the back axle. Yep. That's not going anywhere. Even if we had to pick this thing up on its nose and we lift the entire thing mm -hmm. on its, its, you know, by the tail, and so it's straight up and down, I have no problem with that. What right. One thing we don't want to do is we don't want to run our rope around that axle. We want to run a chain around it and then yeah. bring the chain yeah. out. I brought a couple of those uh, long tubular hot dog bags, you know, 3,000 pounds lift each. So we could probably lay one out here. Uh -huh. and there's a whole bunch of different attachments points. So we could find a bunch of different attachments points down below, and then that could help balance it out as we raise. That's what we're my, my biggest concern with this is if we do any attachment to the track <clears throat> and the track breaks free, <clears throat> we're shooting lift bags to the surface yeah. with the track. In my, in, in my opinion, we need to be on that frame. 
What well, about what about the main bags on the support points and maybe lighter bags on, on the track? I, I could go with the bag each. Maybe. I think part of it is going to be uh, when we go down this afternoon to inspect it. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll be see. able to tell, you know, what we're dealing what, with because we this may not even be an option. This could already be deteriorated or broken. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I mean, it's nice to talk about all the options, but once we go down, we can. Yeah. At least we're familiarizing ourselves with yeah, exactly. the structure. Yeah, how big yeah, it is. Structure. It's yeah, bigger, so we could so we, than I so we could actually go run some chain around these uh, this frame and then feed it through here. You know, feed it through here and run it. Yeah, but you, along you're, the you're, chain. you're laying without a tank though. I mean, think about you're you're gonna have a tank on your back. Uh huh. That somebody's that changes to, things. Somebody's yeah. Gonna have to slide in here. Like you, this. you slide, do a little side mount action. Let's do a little side mount action. Like oh, this. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm comfortable with side. I'm comfortable with side mount. But but even at that, we don't want to go anything by the cab. Like we we have to stay behind the cab on this. Truthfully, right. I think we need to dive it and see how it's sitting from there. I mean, at least now we walked around, we familiarized ourselves. We see where the frame is. We see a couple of attachment points. You know, we just we just need to get down there and look at it. So for the next couple of days, we have like our own little private boat launch. Uh, we got Mike, the lodge owner. Uh, he has some GPS coordinates. He kind of said that we're. Oh, I'm actually heading the wrong direction. But uh, he said kind of towards that. This is my father, John, by the way. Hey, you may have seen him in uh, previous videos uh, up in Portland. Anyway, where we're going, Dad, is see that red boat right there in front of us on the other shoreline, like yes. dead straight. Okay. We want to kind of go to the left right now. Like right now, I have us lined up with it. Right. And about the center of the lake is where we're heading to. Thank you to all the members who uh, have actually helped us uh, purchase this new sonar. Also, today's new episode sponsor, we have uh, Scout Inflatables as well as Bixby. I'll show you a lot more about the boat. Anyway, the, the boat, we're just getting started. They've sent so many accessories with it because they saw us on the uh, Marty, the missing bridesmaid, and they saw the small slough that we needed to get into. So they, they sent us a boat. It, like. Look at this. Nice. You know? Very nice. In addition to that, Bixby has been a sponsor of ours in the past, and they also sent us like this little motor, battery packs. Anyway, we'll talk more about them because we are like real, oh, yeah, it's a wireless remote control as well. So, anyway, our main objective right now, though, is we're actually heading out. I need to set the sonar right now to make sure that, ooh, that's looking pretty good already. I gotta change the depth on it. There it is. Yep, I see it. Right there on the left. Okay, throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it. There it is, yep. Yeah, I, yeah, I have the coordinates of it now. So we'll come back around, we'll pick up the buoy and then drop right on top of it. Before we go too far, I wanna introduce everybody to, uh, we're, we're gonna get to know everybody throughout this, but the first person uh, we need to introduce you to, Jonathan, master diver, safety coordinator, dude, whatever other <laughs> titles he wants to give himself, more than happy to put them down below. But uh, what we need to do is, you know, anytime you put something big together, we are dealing with a very technical dive on this one. In fact, let me just have you jump in. Sure. <laughs> and I have one more thing to throw in here for you. Okay. We were planning on a 65 foot dive at 10,300 feet in elevation. Right. That changes things from what I told you. So come in within six feet of the microphone and, or <laughs> Camel, you come on in here. Jonathan, take over and give us a safety briefing and what it is that we're up against. At altitude, what you always want to do is you've got to dive on a theoretical table because of the way the residual nitrogen builds up in our system here. With this new information, since we're about 10 to 12 feet higher, deeper dive at 10,300 feet, um, we just want to be extra careful. It's going to be kind of roughly more close to about 100 to 110 foot equivalent dive at sea level. We can only dive 14, 15 minutes right in there. So let's keep our, make sure we don't dive any longer than that. Other safety factors that we do have, we have two emergency oxygen kits right over here. One in the red case, one in the black case. Um, we wanna make sure that if we are feeling any issues, you're starting to feel fatigue when we're up or you're having any weakness, don't hesitate to use some of the oxygen, okay? We wanna be safe on us. We're diving a snow cat wreck. <laughs> Can like, you believe it? <laughs> not just diving it, but we are the like the only people in the world right now that are pulling 10,000 plus feet, pulling a snow cat out 65 Absolutely. feet deep. So with that, we have to be very uh, methodical in our planning stage for all this as well. So here's, if you guys can just kind of follow me through my entire thought process on this. Normally, you know, in the past, we've gone down, we've checked out the, you know, the wreck and what is it we're after. We're all fairly seasoned in what we've been doing that I feel really confident and you guys all feel confident. If you don't, let me know right now that we can start taking stuff down to, you know, start attaching 
right now. So as we walk through this, we have to, and this is maybe like a long rant for anybody that's never been here before, but really we wanna bring you into the entire world of what this actually takes. This is all the behind the scenes. It's not just the, you know, hey Jared, show me the snow cat coming out of the water. This is a, this is what it takes, okay? You are here with us for the next two days. And I'll try to cut this down to like 45 minutes for the video, so. <laughs> With it, what we have is we're looking for the weakest link in all of this. And he's playing jump rope. Uh, by the way, the quick introduction here, come here. This is Elijah, Elijah's gonna be with us. He's actually my little brother. So you're hanging out for the next two days and you're gonna watch the spring of snowcat out. You can say, yeah, we're not bringing a snowcat out. Talk to, the, talk to everybody. Hey, what's up? All right, enough with Elijah, back to me. So. <laughs> So we're looking for the weakest link in all this. With this, 20 plus thousand pounds breaking load, 6,000 working load. We have 10,000 working, or 10,000 breaking, 3,300 working, same thing, 4,700 working load. So our weakest link in all of this is gonna be a carabiner at 3,300, which means that with a 1,500 pound lift bag, we are only going to put two of them max for each lifting line. So what we're doing is we're first attaching to the snowcat. This line is then going to be floated up 25 feet closer to the surface, at which point at the top of it, come this way Emily. At which point we've already pre-rigged it with additional carabiners that tomorrow we're gonna to put two bags on this one, two bags on this one. Chris has taken this one down, so that's gonna take care of four bags. We have another five, six bags Where'd the other ones go? Oh, seven, eight, nine, ten. So with this, because it's a 15,000 pound snowcat, it, underwater, it's actually only weighs like 13,000 pounds. We have enough bags with us to actually lift 21,000 pounds. Lifting capacity is not gonna be a problem. We're 25 to 30 feet higher off the bottom than normal, so tomorrow's dive is, like I said, we, we talked about earlier, 50 to 55 feet. It's a lot safer depth for us to be diving tomorrow than it is today. Hi. One of the other things to know about this, did you guys know that the Navy turned this down? Uh-huh, that's right. We're beating the SEAL team, okay? <laughs> okay, they wanted nothing to do with it. There's like, wait a minute, it's not sea level, it's high elevation, it's a technical dive. Call Jared, Adventures of Purpose, and get his entire crew out there. They can handle it, because we can't. Actually, I have no idea if that's true or not. <laughs> On that note, we're gonna get in the water. We've already got a buoy out there. As you guys saw, we're marked. We got a game plan. We're gonna make this happen. Any questions? Is everybody comfortable? Chris is hooking up to the back with two of them. Nick knows where he's going. Woo, one thing I wanna throw in. Whoever's taking this one, identify if that front, if you can hook to the front at all, that we have something sticking out in front of the cab, hook this to that. Okay, got you. And I want to hook that tomorrow. Okay. With a bag. But hook it now. So put it as far front as, as far as far away as from it. Okay. Yep. Other than that, I like it. Suit up, get in the water, let's go get ourselves a snow cat, pre rig it tonight, pull it tomorrow. Let's do it. Check, 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 audio check. You hear me? Got the rod clear over. Wow, that's nice and loud and clear. I like that now. I'm confirming I am on the snowcat. You know, there's not a lot that I can see. It's, it's real cloudy down here. I'm going to pop up and get out of the way.
dark day before the moon. Oh, the uh, top of the cab is broken open. Uh, it's quite a sight. Good luck with what you got. I'm heading back up. Holy cow. Different? That was gnarly. <laughs> Where do you think you attached to? Um, I got to the front passenger side, uh, close to the front on the track. Chris, how'd you make out? Jared, I got two lines hooked on the frame in two different spots on the back. Oh, that's beautiful. You're saying okay, but you're not okay. Ugh. Got a big old rip in my dress. I didn't get my side attached. Uh oh. Started suit started filling with water. Pretty cold. Where'd you get a rip at? Like like how? So just, just when I was down there, I tried to wrap around. I just snagged it. A bunch of water started coming in. Okay. On the uh, on the track. Yeah. Hey, thanks by the way, Scott Inflatables for hooking us up with the boat. Heck yeah. <laughs> we are putting it to the test. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's still on. Yeah, I'm in here, so that's a lot of weight. Yeah, putting it to the test. So, again, we got a Bixby. This is a Bixby Scooters. Not only can you use it as a kayak motor, inflatable motor, but also a uh, underwater little uh, scooter. You can use it. So many uses for it. I'll leave a link in the description. Definitely check them out. You're not hooked? No, I couldn't, I couldn't find anything to hook to. What are you doing now, Dad? Well, I'm trying to do it all one-handed here. There, I got it. So comment below, do you have a dad that when you take him places, it just kind of turns into... Got it. You it know, does. Uh, <laughs> one of these. We got, we got a line attached. All right, so I have to say, today was even more successful than I thought that we were going to be right out of the gate. Like, we had a few little hiccups along the way, including Sam ripping a suit. We got an extra one. Hopefully, you can fit in. Does anybody have anything they'd like want to say before we wrap for the today it's been a long day for us we were going to be out here again tomorrow morning at nine o'clock chris anyone going down there be very careful not to get entangled in a line because there's a bunch of lines down there now <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah there are good point well and the good news is we're only going down to the uh top of 45 50 right. foot mark now yeah and so and tomorrow we're going to go down two at a time not three at a time bye okay. see you tomorrow that's all you, you know work. it's a beautiful day today to go out and get that snow track out of the lake. So we're officially back for day two. Uh, feeling really good and confident about yesterday. We did talk about some of the attachment points that we had yesterday. I do have one concern is I don't I didn't pay enough attention to the snowcat yesterday, and maybe Mike, you can answer this question. For those four foot stills that come across, are those only bolted to the rubber or is there an yeah. additional metal it's underneath? About the grouser on the track, the width of the rubber is a plate. Okay. Bolt head hits that plate that keeps it from pulling through the rubber. Perfect. Okay, so so that's my concern that I started thinking about last night is if we're pulling on the metal, the metal we're not going to bend it, but we could rip it away from the rubber. So for that reason, I know that Chris, you have a solid attachment point. You have two on the frame for sure. Mark and Jared are going to bomb down. Let's have have you guys change those but the other three that are down there take them off the tracks because the bed of the cat is actually missing we have additional attachment points to the frame see if you can get the frame even if you have to go to the back where chris is at right now i don't care i just want solid frame points keep it off the tracks, keep it off the tracks. let's pop this thing up so everybody here actually knows what's going on under the water because uh, we've been talking about it all the time but let me bring you guys into the uh, realm of what we actually have so we have the the floor of the uh, lake is what we have, and we have a snow cap that's sitting on top of it. Okay, with the uh, the cab is kind of sitting over here with you know little rails over here. We have two lines that are attached down at the bottom here that are attached to kind of a uh, a buoy line. And then the buoy line then finishes going up. So we have 50 feet here, we have 25 feet here. Right now we have three of the other lines are attached to the tracks. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move those off the tracks, move them to the actual frame. Same type of a setup here, so we have 25 to 30 feet. So let's just call it 25 feet, and then we have another 50 feet up above. So we're gonna bring the lift bags down to these attachment points, attach two bags to each one of them, so that way we're gonna have between these five lines that are down here, one, two, three, four, five, 
we actually have 10 bags total we're going to be attaching to them. We're then going to inflate the bags, bring these bags up to the surface of the lake. We now then have the cat hanging 25 to 30 feet below with the bags up at the surface. So we have yeah, bags. Yeah. See, those are like 10 bags. Woo! Big bubble of bags. All right. Um, we're then going to be dragging all of this over to until it high centers somewhere over here because the lake bottom will eventually high center out. So we're going to high center it here, release all the bags. Okay. Let the cat sit. We're going to reposition the bags and then float it nice and high and finish doing our final lift to the surface. So I hope that that kind of explains exactly what it is that we're doing. All right. Right now I'm checking my BC, make, make sure everything's good. My straps are ready to go. Uh, one of the most important things is that your air, you turn your air on. That's really important. Um, one, one thing I want to do is check my uh, rag. And then out of the uh, safe second. That's the way they sound. The straps are tight. The hoses look good. Uh, inflator hose for the BC is connected right. Do a little test. That, that feels good. I think I'm good to go. Who makes this? Uh, Scout Inflatables. Good job, Scout. Sponsors. Sponsors. Good support, job. Support them. Link is in the description. Yes. Okay, let's move down there and do our thing. See you later. All right, yeah, let's bring Jared in the boat here. Just so we're solid now, five five points on the frame. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, let's send you guys down with two bags. Drop down the uh, the lines there with your bags. So you're, you're going to take a bag, you're going to take a bag. Okay. The hose is going to be attached to one of them. Oh, one of them's going to have the air hose already attached? Yeah, and so three tugs to start the air. Okay. Once you fill it three quarters of the way full, switch it to the other bag. Fill it How long does it take to fill one three quarters of the way full? Two minutes, maybe? Oh, okay. Make sure both bags are attached before you start filling. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, you won't get that carabiner open. 80% more to go. Eight more lift bags. Eight more lift bags. <laughs> That's not bad. That's only four, four rounds, though. Yeah, four rounds. Yeah, so basically, um, we've got all the attachment points and the straps and the chains hooked around the um, snow cat to where it's solid on the frame. The two divers that are in the water right now are filling the first two lift bags. They took them down and hooked them up. And I think Jared said he's guessing it's going to take about 10 of them. That's what he said. So he said it should take about two minutes per bag to get him as full, three quarters full, which is what we're shooting for. But until he fills one with that air compressor, he's never ran that air compressor and fill bags at 10,300 feet. So I, it might take a little longer. Right. So in shifts, we're just going to keep going out, fill new tanks, and uh, I mean, it's it'll take a few hours. What's been the most challenging thing so far? Um, the uh, lack of visibility down there. Uh, luckily there's no current, but then just uh, shoveling divers and gear back and forth as well, with the high winds out on the lake. Uh, making sure that we have the proper attachment points with the uh, low visibility down there. Nick, yeah. Yeah, do only one of you. Yeah, Mark's uh, still doing a surface interval because he's right. down for like 21 minutes on that first. Let's uh, get you in and go on then. What's that? Let's get you in and go on then. Absolutely. Here we are, Jared. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, Fish, proficient Nick, for lift bags. We should never leave Nick by himself, evidently. Oh, no, no. That's right. We can fix it. What do you feel uh, had happened? I guess the first thing is, do we have a strap attached to it down below? Okay, so we have a full strap. So whoever attached whoever. that strap didn't attach it properly yeah. down below yeah. to the frame. That's not even attached to anything. So they yeah, my my guess is maybe it was attached to a weak spot and it just ripped. They broke whatever it was attached to. Yeah, that's true too. Cause yeah, cause it does have. If you look close on it, it's got some grease and stuff on there. Yes, yeah, yeah. So clearly, clearly it was attached to something. Yeah. But it broke free. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, a tip that we have learned also 
when you inflate the bags, inflate your first one, but your second one, make sure your valves are not facing each other. Yeah, I've had that happen on the first one. Okay, so everybody's experienced that. All right. So basically when the thing came up, it had both lift bags on it, the one that was still empty, the one that was half full, the rope, and the little strap with the carabiner still attached. So whatever it was attached to literally broke through on the snowcat and everything, all the rigging came up with no debris or anything, luckily. Uh, but as soon as it went, I just started kicking out of the way because I didn't know if it was going to be pulling something up with it or whatnot. So it's a little spooky for a minute, but we're all good. So we can see the other buoy is coming up. Yeah, it's like we got a little yeah. bit of lift. Yeah, we're getting some lift over there. Hey, no! Leah come up? Nope, not yet. She had ear issues. I need to go back down. I don't know where she's at. All right, yeah, go find her. All we have is a chain there, so. Yeah, look at this, look at this chain here. I don't see. I mean, it should have been connected. Yeah, but yeah, there's nothing. Uh, I, I don't that get it. That doesn't make sense to me at all. No, I don't get it. So if everybody can hear me, so where we're at right now, we have nine bags, or ten bags are all on. Nine of them are mostly full. We have one that does not have air. So I think that if we finish that one off, and then we run around and top off the rest of them, I think that one dive underneath with two of us is going to take care of it. We don't need to take that compressor back out. We can go the way that we normally do it, tank, uh, regulators. And I think that 10 minutes underwater, yep. we should have it floating. We still have plenty of daylight, so as long as we get that thing floating in the next hour, we still have plenty of daylight to get it on the trailer tonight. Right, audio check, audio check. Sweet, sweet, we got audio. All right, I'll take the tank. Thank you very much. Right, I'm going to disconnect your hose once I get down there. I see some orange coming up. Nice little cluster there. Love it. Oh, look. Looks like I got a little leak there. I'm going to have to fix that one later. All right, that one's free. Now let's just start checking these bags out. Got a little hole there also I'm going to have to fix. Turn that one off. Let's put another one. This one looks almost empty. Can we even get to that one? What do you think, boss? Well, we're running into a lot of uh, these bags. We're running into one another. Cutting into each other. And uh, pretty much destroying each other. That's what's happening. So we're so bunched up in there. So let me do this. Let me take, change this uh, regulator out. At the same time, I'm going to take the bag down with a hose on it. And we are going to, I'm going to attach that bag, attach the tank. Then I'm going to fill as many as I can on what air I've got left here. Once I'm done and I pop, then you can pop your uh, generator. Which so, way am I headed? Uh, so head past that buoy, past where his bubbles are at, and you're looking for the buoy that's just under the water. Oh, oh, we got another ball floating now. Okay, there's a, there's a sign, guys. There it is! Yeah! Got her! Woo-hoo! No! Oh, maybe it's just moving. Like they're all attached. They're still attached. Mark, Mark safe. Yeah, Mark. Woo. Mark. Is it under there or did it pull loose? It was under there. The cat's under it right now. It blue. It just starts shooting straight up. It's moving. You know, see how it's moving now? Yeah. It's just moving like it's attached. Do you want me to tell him to start tugging on that rope? See what happens? Yeah. Copy that. Tell him to tug on the rope. Tug. I, I don't know. I like. I'm. I'm. I don't even know what to think right now. Mark, can you put eyes on it? Do we have the cat? What? Do we have the cat? I don't know. I, I'm just trying to get my thoughts together here. Cool. Just peek Things at it. It's happening really fast down there. <laughs> okay, no problem. Yeah, they're pulling. I think they're pulling. Yeah. We're getting on it. Times. I don't think the cat's on it. No. But, so, but there's something under there though, because it's still holding some of the bags, but the bags should be a lot further underwater right now. Yeah, Mark's speaking. It's pretty heavy. 
Should I tell them to stop going? No, because we're not attached either, so I mean, something big has happened down there. I think it's coming in. Yeah, they're, they're going too fast. I don't even know what to think. I don't even know. We're going to drive over there. Let's go check it out. Yeah. Me and, me and him go look at it. I bet you there's no lines attached to the balloons. I think it's just the... I got down there, and all of a sudden, I was just a complete debris and blackout. And I'm trying, I'm trying to get some uh, physical look at it, but it was just totally blackout with debris and sediment. So, uh, I mean, that, swim, swim to me. that led me to believe that. So we had it, and then we did. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Ah. There's only seven lift bags on shore, so there's still three down below. Holy crap! Do you hear that? So the one I was filling up was on the white strap. Yeah? Yeah. And it was the empty one. And it was just about, had it almost full, and then all of a sudden it just went. Are all divers accounted for and safe? Everyone says yes. Thank you. Yeah, check this out, man. Okay. All right. Um, so 100%, I know exactly what happened and why. And so amazing uh, learning experience for us on this one as well. What ended up happening is we started on those tracks. On those tracks, it was smooth that we went around. And had I even remembered that we were using these on that to go around the frame, 100% no anything metal, anything sharp. And so as it started to come up, it just sliced right on that frame is what ended up happening. So anytime we go to frame, any metal, we have to be chained. We cannot use soft shackles, we can't use rope, we can't use straps of any sort around anything metal, anything frame, so. At this point, I feel defeated for right now. We're not done. We always have a conclusion. We always get what is it we're here for. Um, I'm in the water tomorrow. I hope that uh, everybody else is as well. Uh, I understand that we have incredible weather tomorrow. So I think what we're gonna do is just kind of, uh, you know, pack up, enjoy our evening, enjoy an amazing barbecue, socialize, talk about what we saw. But tomorrow, I'm maybe one of the first ones down. Sam probably one of the first ones down. Chris one of the first ones down. I think between the three of us, we're just gonna anchor this thing tight. We're gonna anchor it properly. And um, from there, we're just gonna start putting bags. We're not gonna be cycling like we were today. You know, today I really wanted everybody to have an opportunity to get in on it, be a part of it. Um, whoever feels really strong tomorrow, like we're gonna be down two, three, four bags at a time. We're gonna have this thing up within two hours and finish what we needed, what we were hoping to finish today, so. Frame tomorrow, nice and tight, chains all the way around. It's still coming out. All right, hope to see y'all tomorrow. Yeah, he's gonna let us know if he's not feeling good. Well, there's no chain wing or uh, eggs yet. I mean, not that good I know of. Okay, keep in mind, it is a long drive back if we need to take you to Grand Junction, so. Yeah. Bye, see you tomorrow. All right, we are back for what we did not want to be a day three, but day three, we're gonna nail it today. Let's just uh, kind of game plan this out for what we have. So we still have the cat is still down at 75, 80 feet. We currently have, the good news is, we currently have one line coming up. Let's call this our one line. One line is coming up and it currently has three bags attached to it. I'm guessing that uh, they may have deflated a little bit overnight. We're not going to worry about inflating those at this moment in time. Right now we're gonna be sending Nick and Chris down with two lines and a buoy. So they're gonna be dropping down with an 80 foot line. They're gonna attach they're gonna be attaching to the frame in two different locations. I don't care where it's at. I don't care what position the cat is in because it did end up back down. It could be on its tracks. It could be upside down. It could be on its side. We don't know. Right now, we just want this thing floating so that way we can get it to shore at a 25 foot depth is what we're really after. From there, we have plenty of time, air safety to really play with it. Once you guys have put those two down, I'm then going to drop back down. 
uh, with my own buoy ball. And I'm gonna have two more lines that we're going to attach. You'll have two lines, I'll have two lines. So we'll have four lines total that we'll be able to attach uh, additional bags to this morning. You're gonna drop down the yellow bolt buoy. So the yellow buoy is what we have for you. You're gonna go for, try for four bags or three? We do four. Okay. I'm going to go I, I for four. We'll do two okay. Yeah, I think we can each do two. Okay. So drop down the yellow buoy line, two bags on one carabiner, two bags on the other carabiner. This red orange buoy is actually our dedicated tow line. So we'll separate this strap from the main tow line. It's very clear and evident because it has, you know, yellow hooks. So it has the orange line attached to it. Leave that one as our very last if we have to put our tent bag on there. On my drop down, I will be going around and just double checking all five of these connections to make sure we're not gonna have any hiccups down there. One of the very first things we have to do this morning is head out and make sure that uh, buoy I put out last night is still close to where we need to drop in. So we'll be uh, heading out to Waypoint, making sure, uh, see if the lift bags are still floating and then we're gonna put Nick and Chris on those lift bags and send them down. So we still have lift bags are showing some shadows, some lift bags right there. So don't pull on the line, but follow the line down. Don't you pull on it, you said? Yeah, it's not attached to anything. Just a weight or something? Yeah. Okay. We got three solid locks. Awesome. The, the existing one is chain. It's good to go. The airbags, carabiner, everything looks good on it. Perfect. We got two on. We're good. Is it still sitting upright? Yeah. yeah. Kind of at an angle, it seemed like Chris didn't it, but like facing maybe forward. Okay. But it's it's upright, yes. Everything is hooked at the back. There's nowhere else to hook. That's what I'm saying, because it's kind of sitting nose down, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, we'll drag it. That's what I'm saying, we can get as far as we can. Yeah. Maybe pull it in backwards. Yeah. yeah I don't know. But I mean, I mean, we're nice and solid though. Yeah, you let you look at the other hookups, you like them? Yeah, yeah, I like everything down there. So we have uh, five solid attachment points on the back. I uh, can't get to the front. I mean, the nose is, you know, in, and if you try to even swim over there, like it is so silty, okay. like without us even kicking up any silt, just yeah. the way that it all sits. So with that, um, same game plan that we had before. Okay. Go down uh, on the yellow buoy, do, okay. uh, do four balls. He doesn't have life jackets, so we're gonna see if we can find life jacket for Sam there. Um, anyway, kick it to save with that game plan. We'll send down the uh, second set of divers after that one for the... Well, actually, we were thinking, uh, if we do this right, we might be able to do all six between the two of us. If you can, knock them out. But we still have those other three that have to be finished filled, aired up as well. Yeah. So, so, yeah, whatever you can do, and then we'll put another diver in if we need to. Jared's going down right now. You want to fire that up? Yeah, man. Um, I didn't get one of the vapes is only partially filled. Okay. I was starting to hear a lot of popping though. Okay. So. Um, Can we move and then? Yeah. Okay. Things are starting to move and I ran out of bottom time so I didn't get the okay. fill up that big. Yeah, I think one more bag and then just finding any of that look deflated. Okay. I think it'll go. Excellent. Because I was hearing popping, I was saying, I swear I saw it start to go. One bag is all you gotta do. One bag, if it doesn't go, then you gotta top the other ones off. Okay. Oh no! I think it's gonna go though. Okay, well, so we're going down at the yellow buoy, right? Got yep. Bag. Got this. Like my heart's racing right now, like, with excitement. <laughs> yeah, we almost got this. Yeah. By, by we, I mean they. Yes, yeah. So you're the men for the job. I mean, but they couldn't have done it without us telling them what to do. Oh, absolutely, and running the hose. And, oh. Yeah. Be sure to check out Sam Sam the Adventure Man. Link is in the description. Don't, don't unplug it. Yeah, if you unplug it, we'll lose everything. Yeah, so what that is, is your bag is just full, and you're, venting. And you're just venting on that one. So, uh, we have to go top off the other ones, Chris. Okay. And I see what you're talking about, but the, trying to hook that thing up, it's like there's back pressure on yeah. it. Yeah. And man, I was having a hard time. <laughs> like but, there's back pressure or there is back pressure? Well, you know what I mean? You're like, yeah. Why is this shit 
you go right in. Why can't you? You have to yeah. hold that piece back. We're, we're gonna fix that for next time. When your hands start getting we're, we're, we're gonna put a valve on there. Oh, nice. Okay. It's getting real muddy down there, like it's disturbing. Yeah. So. Thing just does not want to pop. So um. I've only got like one of my bags that's not inflated. Everything else is fairly inflated. Your bag's inflated. Yep, so uh, let's um, send Jay back for the other sausage. I need two more of these tanks just so I can keep things filling and one more of my uh, high pressure stills. All right, wish me luck. So this is it. Jared's going down with the last of our lifting power going down with a 3,000 pound lift bag. He's gonna go around and try to touch up the other one. So if he doesn't get it on this shot, we're out of luck. So fingers crossed. Let's get this thing out. We're done with this, come on. I have a uh, really good theory as to what just happened. Did everybody see the schnook that just flew over and the sniper hanging out the window, <laughs> shooting at those orange bags? 100%, that's exactly what happened. I think so. Oh, so when you were climbing out, it looks like you bumped one of those levers and uh, opened it up and started flooding. You're gonna blame this on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, we should go back down and peek at it. So Sam thinks this might just be an easy fix of one bag that I may have bumped a lever on. Mm -hmm. The good news is we're still attached to it. We have our tow line is attached to it. We have our other buoy line attached to it. I'm going with the sniper theory. All right. All right. But we'll see if your theory. We'll see if your theory is correct see. on it. Um, we still have plenty of daylight. It's not over. We know it floats. Mm -hmm. I don't think we popped a bag. I don't think any bags popped. I hope that your theory is correct. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so too. Uh, so let's, uh, let's catch our breath and then find a better mood and try it again. Thought process at this point, I think, um, create a manifold, two compressors on it. We just have to keep air in those bags. That's why we popped it before is because I was running around filling those bags with a high flow um, regulator while we also had the other compressor going at the same time. So I think if we create a manifold that one diver can go in and hook them all up within 10 minutes, we no longer have a diver in the water, two compressors going, we got the bags going and I think that's the best idea at this point. Anton saying yeah, John saying yes. That's worth a shot. Anton, you know exactly what we need. You want to ride with somebody that can get us to where we need to go? I was uh, I was watching it to see if, if anything was happening. I was maintaining 39 feet, yeah. and it wasn't it wasn't going up. Holy crap, Anton! Yeah. What do you want? Wow, I am excited for those. Right. Run what you brung. See what happens. We're gonna go into there. We're gonna go into there. We're gonna go into there. Yeah, yeah. Will that work? I think that just might work. All right, my buddy. Can you? Right. Let me take a few more bites and I'll get it addressed. All right. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta get a picture. I came from the mud. No, you're right. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. There's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. Hope they won't shoot me down soon. Yeah, so this little tank here just popped up. One of the ones we were looking for, Jared just found it and sent it to the surface. Try to catch me howling at the
for us to fire up? Uh, yeah, fire it up. It's good to go. Fire them both up. It's only been 35 minutes. Wait a little longer. So right now I'm like really shivering and shaking, starting to get hypothermia. This uh, suit somewhere along the way. Ended up getting a uh, leak. I'm completely wet inside. Um, has nothing to do with a uh, zipper being open this time. Sam and uh, Emily, they're gonna give it another 10-15 uh, minutes on this one. Then uh, we might have to come back uh, in a month or two with another game plan. We don't know yet, so. Anyway, we're gonna go take care of this little tinge of hypothermia. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Jared, so uh, we're checking things out over here. It seems like she has a closed circuit and mine is open. Uh, we, we, swap, we swap poses to see what that would look like. And as soon as we swap poses, my PSI went up and her PSI went down. So I'm thinking that that knot that you tied in the one piece of the octopus may have come done or undone or perhaps it's just loose somewhere else. All right, I got you. I never even told anybody up here. We, uh, I'll tell them now. Um, one of the, on one of the, help me out, manifolds. Yep, yep. Copy. By the time I was down there, it had lost one of the fittings. So I, I kinked it, I kinked it, I kinked it, mm -hmm. and then I tied it the best I could while I was underwater. Gotcha. So that's the open circuit he's talking about. Gotcha. So if we have an open circuit, it could be draining five other bags. True story. On there. Yeah. Um, so you can bring that back up. So you're saying a nozzle came off the end? Yeah, you have a uh, male fitting that was not on the end of it when I was underwater. We have another one. We want to go down and try to screw it off. Yeah. I think at this point, I mean, we have, it's been a long three days at this point. And I think that, I mean, we have some people that need to start. There, some that are already left. We've busted a lot of bags out there. I mean, we have a lot of holes in them, so we're not filling up properly is our other problem. I think that's really at the end of it. You know, I was talking to Nick and Chris and some of the other ones. We've never failed. Sometimes we just get a little delayed is where we're at in this process. Um, you know, everybody's willing to come back. August, September, I think is what we shoot for. When does the uh, snow season actually start here? Labor Day. October, okay. It's snow Labor Day. So I know we can make it uh, September for sure. Uh, Mark and everybody, Jared, I'm, yeah, Jared's not back to work yet. <coughs> So on that note, to be continued. To be continued is where we're at with this one. Like I said, we never fail. Sometimes we just well, it takes a while. Continue the operation. Yeah. Big Good news is, is we are in the lift bag business, so we're going to be making some custom lift bags for this one. Ten pound, uh, ten thousand pound lift open bottoms. I got some good ideas for uh, the way that we're going to conquer this one next time. Nice. And we're going to do this in a day next time, Chris. Sound good? <laughs> we had our practice. Thanks for hanging out with us with another episode. Be sure to subscribe and click that little bell notification. We will see you on the next one. We don't know what it's going to be. Might even be the snow cat later in September, August, September. We're going to get it though. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Um.